Hey, everybody, there's a couple of people we want to thank for supporting us at patreon.com slash comic book club this month. Kick it off, Pete. Aaron C. Hollis. Adam Marks. Adriel Moreland. Amanda Harris. Amy Gonzalez. Andrew Tillman. Benjamin Brown. Brent Macris. Chelsea Mack. Chris Leatherman. Clemens Soil Lower. Uh, Corbidorby Doodle. <laughs> Curtis LaRock. Deman Ryan. Dan Snow. Danny Hack. Danny Ali. Dennis Scott. Dustin Remy. Eduardo Martinez. Aaron Dorian Jeffrey Risher uh, Gerard de Villiers James Connolly Jason Williams Jessica Ashcraft Joe Crack John George Jonathan Jong Joseph Kelly Joshua W. Bronx Kalen Swift Karen Comstock Catherine Anderson, Kendall Wilson, Kevin Grimes, Kevin Kleinrock, Kieran Broderick, Lee Brown, Luana Thomas, Luke Asink, Mark Carrillo, Mark Kiefer, Mark Seller, Megan Thigpen, Michael Sturgeon, Mike Dargenio, Mitchell McDonald, Nick Broughton, Nick Grayson, Obvious Soul Art, Paul Collars. Perry Taliaferro. Pip Pete 2020. Primetime Paulie G. Rahadian Sastrowardio. Tamela Rush. The 12 Banch. Tiago Nascimento. Victor Perez. W. Blaine. Wally D. Librarian. Will Buchanan. Zika's Viral Comics. Uh, we get louder as we say those names. <laughs> yeah. And thank you all for listening. And now enjoy the live show. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out to Comic Book Club Live. Please give it up for your hosts, Alex, Justin, and Pete. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Comic Book Club. I'm Alex. And that's our man of the booth, Boothman Prime. Boothman Prime. And I am particularly excited about this show. Oh, yes. really? I'm excited about the show because uh, we have a guest on. We do have a guest? Uh, we usually uh, have a guest. And we owe this person a favor. Right. So <laughs> this was, we had this guest, we'll introduce him uh, officially in a moment. Yes. Uh, but he was on for the last show we did in 2019, right? That's right. Uh, the, oh, which was our anniversary show, surprisingly, because um, we've been doing this show for... 14 uh, years. So, for so many years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is, that didn't get taped properly, so we're doing a do over that show. The, yes. thing I, the reason I'm very excited is I wasn't there for that show. That's right. And that's why you will remain silent this yep. entire show. Uh, because we are redoing the show exactly. Exactly. We are meticulous, yeah, except for right. this part right here, which yeah. is new, obviously. Right. Sure. This but is a new this introduction. On, this is like a bonus introduction. It's a yeah. bonus introduction. Yes. We're going to drop into the original one. And yeah. as we know, uh, this you weren't here, so you wouldn't be right. here. And Pete, as always, is facing me rather than the audience. Yep. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of uh, the state. Hey, state JT face. Sizzle, how are you? Uh, I'm good. Oh, man. We got a fun show tonight. Yeah. It's December. Christmas is is coming. That's what we talked about. We talked about oh, Christmas. Because yeah, right. cool. it was before Christmas. Oh, right. I remember now. Yeah. And 2020 is going to be awesome. The yeah. Iowa caucuses are going to go great. <laughs> Super uh, smooth. That's what we said. A lot of stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any? Do you have a script? Like I could jump in on somebody's lines or something. Yeah, you can. Or play, I could just be on lines. Yeah. Why don't you? We'll yeah. call for line when we need yeah. it. You yeah. can play some of the smaller characters. Oh, okay. A lot of townspeople <laughs> interrupted us during the show. <laughs> Boy, you got any weight? Yeah. There was the orphan character. Yeah. Very good. Shine your shoes. They were all kind of the same character. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, wow. Coughed right into the microphone. That's, that's um, my character with TB. Uh, that's, uh, oh, nice. A yeah. lot of old timey kind of old time. <laughs> Oh, that's really, so, oh, wow. I think, you, what if you're dying because you weren't here? Oh, my God. Yeah, thing. I'm just going to fade out. Yeah, yeah, it's like Back to the Future. It's like Back to the Future. Should we welcome out our guest? Let's yes. welcome out. Let's, we he all is know. a friend of the show. We're very excited to have him here, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Wallace. Yeah. yeah. Bob, welcome back. Yay. Welcome back. Hello. Bob. Hello. Microphone. What about Hello. Bob? Great to see Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Bob. Thank you for having me, Pete and Justin. That's yeah. Good. Uh, good. Just read the cue cards if you get lost. This is going to be difficult for me. <laughs> yeah. To ignore me. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm, I'm a big presence on the show. That's wow. true. He's a sweet presence. Oh, thank you. He's a real oh, sweetie. Bob. He is. Now, I do want to know uh, we, of course, apologize for whatever these two dumb shits did on the show. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's okay. Just, no it's fault just of our what, what did you talk about? Lore. What did you talk about? Can we review some topics from the previous show? See if there's um, anything we need to recover? Yeah. Uh, well, I think since the last time I had been on, I learned how to, uh, like, 
print and assemble my own comic. I'm like sort of self-publishing now. Oh, wow. Nice. So, yeah. uh, and we kind of talked here. about that a lot. Um, I've been printing at the Rizzo Lab here in New York. It's at the School of Frank Visual Frank Rizzo? Arts. Hey, Frank Rizzo. <laughs> Some people nice. say Rizzo, and I... Mm. That seems wrong. Oh. I don't know. But it's a like kind the of... Like Rizzo Skywalker? Exactly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Rise. Wow. The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> As they say <laughs> in <laughs> Dublin. <laughs> yep. That's the Rise of Skywalker was a piece of shite. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that is say. how we convinced my grandmother to go with us on Christmas oh. night. <laughs> oh, see, this is new content. We want to have this. This is yeah. new content. <laughs> you know, uh, believe it or not, sh- she fell asleep halfway through the movie that oh, was Justin, not really I to her wish. liking. A movie that was not she was that not is, on board with. I gotta say, even if it, you're not on board, that's a hard movie to fall asleep to because it's so loud and, yeah, and chaotic. Yeah. Well, when she woke up uh, during one of the many Return of the King style endings, mm. yes, um, <laughs> the harshest up, takedown you it, could ever do. It, is that. She she woke up and was like, saw that the film was still playing, and said, "Come on, people." <laughs> <laughs> wow. and, and the two oh, wow. like uh, two kids sitting in front of us turned around, and one of them looked at me. Wow! Oh, look at you! Oh, yeah. Like he was going right he was in like, the face, Yo, right at me. Youths, and he was like, days. "Fix this! Fix this situation!" I know the nerve, right? The assumptions. It's like yeah. if you only knew the power. When I when I was a kid, my grandmother and I watched the movie Mortal Kombat. Yeah, wow. you know your movie? grandmother sure gets it. She yeah. does get it. She's like not averse to genre fiction. She's just discriminating. Yes, but and how did she like MK One? So solid, she was kind of on board. Film. She was kind of on board up until the part where uh, Goro oh, and Johnny Cage are fighting out on the cliff. Yeah, uh-huh. and Johnny Cage delivers his line. Hey, those were five hundred dollars sunglasses, asshole. Oh, yeah. Right before oh, he delivers his move. She, at this point, lost interest in the film, reading a book, looks up from the book. She must have a killer yeah, eyes. Just to though. check, was she reading the novelization of Mortal Kombat, the movie? <laughs> yeah. No joke, I had read that at that really? point. Like, Not I was wow. so down. Into, yeah, I had, I had that. Um, but she looked up from the book and said, $500 sunglasses? Who's the asshole? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> she has withering yeah, criticism of that. Wow. Right. That's a Dude, solid. And bit. the crazy thing, this doesn't happen with every cop of Mortal Kombat, but Johnny Cage Turner is like, oh my god. Yeah, he yeah. got just yeah. like straight out, like Jesus, He's Grandma, like Grandma Wallace. Yeah, the oh, the, the, the color heart. drain from his face. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't do the signature move in this VHS copy. He wow. he just puts his. He takes his bandana off and he just leaves. Goro yeah. wins wow. in this version. That's crazy. Wow, that's horrible. I do have a question about And the your grandmother m- shouted, <laughs> fatality, <laughs> after she said that, right? Uh, I do have a question about the novelization of Mortal Kombat, wow. the movie. Uh-huh. Does it also have, does it have the same ending line as the movie? Which is? So the ending line of the movie uh, is like the cloud pops out because... Yep. Uh, the other world has started to attack them again. And the mm-hmm. last line of the movie is, I think it's Christopher Lambert saying, uh, here we go again. And then the movie ends. That's how all movies should end. Yeah. <laughs> here we go again. Well, in, the- in Return of the King, I feel like they should have found, at the very end, after all the celebration, like Frodo should have popped up and with another ring and been, yeah. here, here we, we go, go again. again. Exactly. That's the only way out. So, so does the novel end that way? The novel like- ends with, actually, your description uh, was was accurate because the novel ends with the line um, and then the movie ends. <laughs> <laughs> the novel ends with the line, please go read a better book. <laughs> the novel ends with like, if you like this, you're going to love the video game Mortal Kombat. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite chapter of any novelization of movies is the first chapter, which is always the FBI warning. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Indeed. Don't in copy this, this. And in this case, the FBI warning is played by um, Jax and Sonya. They're actually oh, right in the movie. Nice. That's chasing incredible. down, I think they're, they're chasing down bootleg VHSs in the beginning mm-hmm. when you first mm-hmm. catch up with them. Who was yeah. Sonia? Was that Natasha Kinski or Sonya something Blade? like that? Sonia Blade. Uh, what, what are you? What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't remember this you actor's name. She was also Mortal- in Billy Madison as yeah, his that's teacher. right. Yeah, yeah, the teacher, same actress. Yep. And yeah. uh, I thought 
everyone in Mortal Kombat was compelling as, like, they're good. I, I don't know. They're, they know, I think, that they're in this video game movie mm. and everyone's doing their best. Mm -hmm. But, like, certain people are really going for it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a fun movie. The second one has those great hamster balls that go through the earth mm -hmm. that are very cool. Have you seen this? Yeah. Mortal Kombat 2? Justin? Not, not interested. <laughs> no? But I wasn't Dude, allowed to play that game because it was too violent. And so I didn't get the oeuvre. Wow. I really was not bored with the. You weren't oh, allowed okay. to play Mortal Kombat? You they didn't pulled really the, ske the skeletons out of people's bodies. Yeah, it's pretty did. violent. Yeah, that's real life, man. We didn't, what's that? That's real life, That's man. human life. I wasn't allowed to um, uh, eat sugar cereal. Oh, yeah. Watch right. G.I. Joe. You said, mm. oh, the G.I. Joe hurts hard, man. Uh, yeah. They were literally shooting You didn't each learn other. any of the life lessons. Like, the, they did a lot of life lessons. Like the drug show. wars That's where they teamed sharing. up to fight against drugs. They t Cobra and Joe team up to That's, fight the bigger enemy, drugs. Yes. That's why I spent so many years as a drug addict. <laughs> yeah. Because the Joes didn't... Yeah, uh, and that's why uh, Pete has an excellent Cobra at his job. That's right. That's right. Wow. <laughs> Connecting Cobra, his health insurance. La, 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 la. Yeah, the Cobra, little known fact, is actually a health insurance company. You know, <laughs> when I worked at a job and they said we offer Cobra because of my allegiance to G.I. Joe, I said I won't, I won't accept nope. it. Oh, wow. really? That's, yeah. I didn't trust it. <laughs> you didn't trust it because it had yeah. a name Cobra. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Nice. That's For fair. years, I turned down free health insurance. Uh, it's not free, um, and you should definitely do some more research. I bet Cobra, the organization, has better health insurance than Cobra, the health insurance policy. Yeah. Instead, uh, Pete took a job at a place that had health insurance provided by Decepticons. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's talk about your comics, Bob. So, Sled or Die is the one that I can see up here. Sled, Sled or, or die. die. Yes, Sled or Die is the story of eight-year-old North, uh, and she is a sort of, like, sledding... Uh, obsessive. She loves sledding. She just Who thinks doesn't? about it all the time. And she drinks coffee constantly. She loves coffee and sledding. Mm. Uh, and in this uh, fictional world called Old New England, uh, the the hill yeah, that, Old New England. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the hill that they're um, that they're all racing on is this sort of coveted spot. And in order to determine who gets first dibs on the hill, they have a race during the first snowfall. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Um, but this year, uh, there's, there's a bit of cause for concern because it is revealed that the hill itself is actually an overgrown ancient alien spacecraft. Whoa. <laughs> oh, man. And some of those nice. aliens have come back, and they want... To sled? Well, we'll find out. Oh, wow. good tease. Yeah, do they want to die? Who, you know, who can say? I don't want, I'm not one to, for spoilers. <laughs> oh, yes. Right. Smart. Where can people pick this up, though? When you're publishing stuff like this, where are you distributing it at this point? Um, I, like a lot of cartoonists that are going the self-publishing route, uh, use a service called Big Cartel, which is just kind of a way for you to digitally make... It's a drug Drugs. cartel. That's yeah, a, yeah. Yeah. yeah, another thing like Cobra. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Great. No further questions. <laughs> um, but it's it's um, basically it's uh, it's like my name Bob Wallace Big Cartel .com, and it's a way to buy uh, mini comics directly from me. Oh, okay. But what's nice is like. Uh, for using that platform, you have to s store some packages at your apartment. Uh, I, you do, I do, which is already a pretty limited space. I know a lot of the audience lives in New York. It's tiny, tiny apartments. Am I right, guys? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Woo! Okay, yeah. Woo! <laughs> you get me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, out of control. Uh, have you seen that friend's apartment, though? Hey, I know. It's Unre too big. Unrealistic. Nah, that's, I've, li I've lived, I live oh, in the friend's apartment. Friends yeah, apartment. Seems normal to me. I'm very good friends <laughs> with the people across the hall. It's, and there's an ugly naked man who lives across the street. Oh, okay. For uh, a few seasons. Uh, the friend's sure. apartment would make sense if it were under bag of holding rules or whatever. You know, like massive right. or TARDIS rules. Oh, that would be so Humongous much Humongous on the inside, relatively Diminutive on the outside. How great would that have been if they had friends and then people come into the apartment and they were like, wow, this is bigger on the inside. And then they looked at the camera and they're like, Doctor Who. Yep. <laughs> or if it were like House of, House of Leaves and it's just like this ominous sense of dread that permeates the whole show. Sure. 
Like, imagine David Lynch directing an episode or two of Friends. No know. laugh track or intermittent laugh track at all sure. the wrong times. Yeah, bad. Nice. Or Cronenberg and like some shit is crawling out of them. Yeah, like the, somebody's got, oh, I can't open my Diet Dr. Pepper. Oh, and then like just a very realistic prosthetic <laughs> of like a maimed yes. hand. Like it's a close up. Y- yeah. Thrown well, in there. Joey got his head stuck in a turkey. Maybe, oh, yeah, maybe Cronenberg directed that episode. Yeah, Body so. horror. Pete, what's your favorite episode of Friends? Um, the one with Ross. Ooh. Yeah, that's oh, a good one. A lot of choice. options there. That's a great Who's choice. your favorite friend? Is it Ross? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No more questions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go down the line. Obviously, who's your favorite friend? My favorite friend? Yeah. Gunther. Oh, cool. Great yeah. answer. What a fun life you have. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Bob? Uh, Balky. Mm, yes, he uh, is the yeah. funniest one. Mm-hmm. He's good. Wait, did you answer? What's your uh, favorite friend? Um, uh, my favorite friend is Joey. He's the only one who, throughout the entire series, wasn't didn't become horrible. Sure. Okay. Well, and that's why you like the spinoff, right? Yes, I Joey. definitely watch every episode of Joey, <laughs> the spinoff uh, of the Friends. Sure. And uh, episodes? Did you watch every episode of that? No, that definitely, because that's how it works. Great. If you like one thing, you have to do it, consume it until you hate it. Man with a plan? <laughs> did you watch Man with a Plan? <laughs> yeah. Is he in that? I don't know. <laughs> I can't. He's at one of those CBS sitcoms. Yeah. Uh, so definitely, on that note, pick up Bob's stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, you can you can pick it up at Bob Wallace, which is spelt unusually W A L L E S dot bigcartel dot com. All right. Very cool. And we are going to move on with our next section, which we like to call. Pete's Arrow Corner! Whoa! What? Is this really Ooh-hoo. happening? So, normally at this point we do the stack, but we yeah. didn't have time today. We didn't have time for the stack. No time. time. Stack, ironic. Because the final episode of Arrow aired on the CW. See, for does. years we have been consistently... And legitimately running out of time to talk about Arrow. Yeah, yeah. those were all... I, I know a lot of people think it's like we're something we're doing oh, like to like make Pete sure. angry or something. No, no, we just never... Crazy, never have had time. The scheduling on this show is yeah. crazy. Off, off the show, when we're not taping the podcast, Justin and I are constantly talking about Arrow to And we're other. so apologetic to Pete all the time about the fact that we right. have to move past this section that is like one of, I think, four sections that Pete exclusively handles. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pete has uh, so a series of, of his own sections. We just go and we're a company man. Now, the funny thing is Pizza that uh, we've never gotten to do this section. We've never gotten to do Pizza Hour Quarter, so people probably don't know. This is actually a quiz as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pete asks questions of Arrow to himself and then silently answers them. Yeah. Yeah. Was that cool on Arrow when that happened? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> it's a really fun section. So, yes. And um, the big section of Pete's Arrow Corner is actually Justin's Arrow Corner, where he talks about archery. Yeah. Uh, but so like, let's kick it off with that. Justin's Arrow <laughs> Corner, talking about archery. <laughs> what is your favorite type of boat to use just um, I like the ones that are like uh, stretchy and then oh there's sure. string. You know what I mean? Oh, Come like on, g- dude. Gubby bows? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, because, um, you know, a bow, uh, like Donatello has a bow. Sure. Right. But that's a staff. Right. And so right. what you want is this bendy one, so then you can shoot the arrow. This is too painful. <laughs> I, do have a, I do have a question. Uh, Bob, did you watch Arrow? Um, I, I did not actually. I, uh, it was on for a while. I, I know I'm <laughs> one app. You didn't tune in for one app. I didn't. I'm I've, I did not. I, I kind of skipped arrow flash that whole era. Wow. Of stuff. Sure. CW I am. I am hearing good things about Batwoman and that makes me want to get involved. Nice. Get involved. Yeah. yeah. Take for, action. For a very <laughs> quick second. Get involved. When you said the elongated B at the beginning of that, I thought you were going to say, I've heard good things about Balky. <laughs> Yeah, he's or Bosch. a breakout star of Perfect Strangers character. Yeah. I shouldn't say star. That the Lots actor's the name. Yeah, no, that's not lost him. the time. <laughs> that's yeah, not no him. one knows his name. <laughs> no one has uh, his name has been, as you said, <laughs> lost to time. It's one of these things where you pick up the internet and you lose. You don't realize you lose information. Yeah. Oh fuck. Uh, were you a fan of Green Arrow, though, the comic book character? Yeah, I think uh, I was, you know, obviously a big fan of the legendary Green Arrow, uh, um, <laughs> Green Lantern team up, the the controversial oh, 70s, nice. 80s. Drugs. Like, it's about any any comic that deals with drugs, like I've read over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, and that's my where my familiarity with the Green Arrow begins and ends, unfortunately, besides appearances in Injustice and stuff. Right. 
Okay. And I guess from what I'm hearing, Green Arrow is the Arrow in the TV show Arrow. Uh, I think so. I'm yes, not 100 percent sure. I would say though that since Bob hasn't really seen the show, we probably shouldn't talk about Arrow. Oh, I don't. No, come on. It. This is like my no, window into a whole we, universe. We don't have. All right. I guess you know what we we we've set aside some time. Good. For this. Good. So, so let's start talking about so, it. So, but I know you've seen it. Walk us through from the beginning, <laughs> including the commercial breaks. Yes. So uh, the CW logo plays, oh or at that point, was it the D- WB logo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah what, it's the DC was, logo. Was so. Michigan J Frog there or not? <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. The show has been on for a long time. So sure. the frog's like, hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, yeah. my ragtime gal. Yeah. And when anybody else turns around, the frog pretends to be a frog. Yeah. 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 Oh, fuck. And in oh, between Jesus. that, we are, yeah, burning, we are, through we are burning through time. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. So we've seen it. The last episode, the last episode, also the last season. Uh, a little <laughs> controversial because... Um, because they aired the last episode during the final season? <laughs> no, <laughs> they I was really going to say... Because it was kind of like the season before was his send off, and then they did sure. the next. Are we season. sure? Yes. Can we fucking talk about it? Okay, I really want to prolong this bit. No, though. I feel like an, it's the end of an era for this bit. Pete. Yeah, so, it is sad because when we lose Arrow, we lose the Arrow the corner. Yeah. <laughs> so if we could actually talk about it for a little bit, that'd be great. Just one last question, real quick. Um, <laughs> when when this is over, Just start punching people. Is there another show that you love that we can make <laughs> oh, yeah, horrible? Dude. Like we can really ruin for you. Beetle- you about we could just like for the entire run of it really get after you about it yeah Yeah. what do you watch like young and the restless or something (laughs) or even something just in your life that you like that we can really drag (laughs) to the mud sandwiches yeah you've already ruined subway sandwiches for whatever well we'll get we'll have for the hawkeye show soon and that'll Uh, sort of be the arrow surrogate oh yeah oh interesting same thing right do you want to talk Same about guy. Hawkeye instead? Yeah, let's talk about Hawkeye. All right, what's going on with Jerry Renner? Huh? Okay, so uh, what's his deal? It's gonna be it's gonna be half about solving local like crimes and discrepancies in the community, and the other half is gonna be about how to flip houses. Exactly. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for getting Renner. Also, Wouldn't it be great if we got to see a show where half the time it was him like I'm Hawkeye, I'm in the Marvel universe, and the other half was like I'm also Jeremy Renner, and I also have this other life. But there was just no pretense between the... So it's sort of like an episodes type show. <laughs> That's except right. I'm, I'm pitching Hawkeye. episodes. I'm pitching I'm episodes. I also hope he gets into uh, making his own beef jerky. He already... Did, wait, he doesn't make it, right? He sells Jack Link's beef jerky or well, something like that? He resells open containers of Jack Link's <laughs> beef jerky. <laughs> He's eating, so, taking some bites out of it. We He's were like, talking earlier about how Vin Diesel has a different microphone in every room of his house to play karaoke. Uh, yeah. Probably the same thing with Jared Renner, but sacks of beef wow. jerky. Yeah. You yeah. know, the more I hear about what Vin Diesel is like off screen with karaoke, Dungeons and Dragons, Vin, if you're listening, <laughs> let's hang out. You can directly get in touch with me via my big cartel online shop. This is, cool. this is very weird. We pre-tape this podcast and then put it up later, but Vin Diesel is actually calling me right no, now. No, get out of here. No. Oh, no. He's here call- he is. Oh, come on. Come on out, Vin. Come on out, Come Vin. on out. And I'm, that's all the time we have for our... Oh, no, no, no. man. Let's talk about Cliffhanger. it. Cliffhanger. Uh, I still kind of want to prolong this a little bit. Come on. Oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> Pete. So now, it's all been building up to this. We told you back eight years ago that we were going to let you do Arrow Corner only at the very end. So we you did. must have prepared a very intense speech yes, or monologue. I do have. Okay, great. Yes. Then please. This yeah. is sort of like this is, this is like a wedding toast. This is yeah. like we you got to stand up for times. the. You got to stand up for this. This is your Gettysburg address. Oh, people. great, great. So um, why are you facing us? Face, no, face the, the audience. audience. I'm Jesus. never facing the audience. Uh, so I just think that uh, Arrow was one of the shows that yeah, started can, face the audience. other face shows. The audience. You know, so it's an important part of like. Other shows being successful, like you couldn't Ozark, have had like DC's Ozark. Legends of Tomorrow without Arrow, you know. So like, <laughs> yeah, there's sure. a lot of Work. things that like Arrow, like not only led the way, but also um, made it okay for other shows. So <laughs> I'm uh, sad to see this show go. That was a staple that did such an amazing job, uh, season after season, of doing some action-packed uh, television that was a lot of fun to watch. I was sad to find out that like. 
he was kind of did that last season, even though he didn't want to. Mm. And I feel like some of his acting, yeah, some of his acting choices no, the reflected character, that. <laughs> Let me die. Which which was a little disappointing because as a huge Arrow fan, I was excited that we're going to get another season. But then I kind of felt bad about it if the main actor didn't want to do it. You yeah, know? yeah. So that's a little uh, upsetting. To talk about it seriously, and you're welcome to sit down now no. Pete, if you want. Here, here. Yeah. Cheers. I got to give it up. Thanks. Oh, Thank Captain, you. my Captain. Uh, nice. Yeah, so uh, there was the seventh season of the show, which was pretty good. Great season. Right? And they wrapped everything up. Mm-hmm. He saved Star City. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Went to live with his lady love. They had a kid. They were raising the kid. Everything was great. They finished it off, and they're like, oh, but we got to do this Crisis on Infinite Earths thing. So he left at the end of the season. But it was done. Like, they finished the show. And then, to your point, they brought him back because money, because they wanted to tee up Crisis on Infinite Earths. Which was a fun crossover. I mean, agree to disagree. Uh, But they... Fuck you, man. Regardless, though, the first seven or so episodes were, again, really good. They were fun. They went through the history of the show. They walked you through episode by episode. We got a a great, like, last thing with all the different characters. We kind of got to revisit them all. Uh, Right. And then my one of my problems with Crisis on Infinite Earths, which is the same sort of problem with uh, any comic book crossover, is it completely weirdly interrupted the flow of the season. So you Mm -hmm. had all of these episodes in the middle where... He died twice. He became the specter. Uh, Mm. They had an episode after Crisis on Infinite Earths where they had a backdoor pilot for Green Arrow and the Canaries, which was very good. I enjoyed it. I would love to watch that show. Me too. But it was set at 2040, so it was like way in the future. Is that when the series is going to premiere? Uh, yeah, something like that. That's they're, confidence. They're working on it. That's gotta, confidence. They got to train everybody how to be canaries first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's trained canaries? Right. It's trained <laughs> birds? <laughs> they, the backdoor pilot was a lot of... Woo, woo. That was my canary voice. Wow. <laughs> that would sound like a dog. Uh, well, uh, duck? Dog? Gotcha. Either way. Uh, and then the last episode was a funeral and some side business and other things and wrapping things up. Mm. And it was fine. It was still touching. Very I nice. It was fine. But it's weird to have, like, your character has already died twice and is off screen for most of the episode. Yeah. yeah, but it was fun because we got a cool meme of, like, Flash, like, doing a peace sign next to his grave, which was kind of funny. Uh, that was behind the scenes. Yeah, but it was still yeah, sure. got out there. That's fine. They probably could have done that anyway without filming an entire episode. We, it still happened. We got to see it. It still happened. Yeah. And that's true of the entire run. And era. I will say... To your point, to give what you were saying credit, even though you were probably still angry at us for interrupting you, that Arrow is to credit not just for DC's Legends of Tomorrow, but the entire modern slate of uh, superhero shows. Whether you consider that a good thing or a bad thing, and certainly on this show, I think we would consider that a good thing, that they would not be happening without Arrow and the initial success of Arrow that has led not just to the CW shows, but the Marvel Netflix shows uh, and all the other sundry shows. And I think even the second wave of those things, things like uh, Umbrella Academy, for example, or Doom Patrol Mm. on the DCN that are responding to those shows. You can't have deconstructed superhero shows without having the superhero shows first. So even though Arrow was very straightforward, action-y, for the most part, it did lead to a ton of other jobs and a ton of other storytelling methods, uh, and for that, it should be lost. And also a lot great. of great cr- uh, crossover events, like the whole like uh, Barry going to his world, he going to Barry's world. That was sure, really fun, fun stuff. playing with the light and darkness of those both of those shows. There was really a lot of great moments, a lot of fun events, and also what was nice was the show evolved over the years. It wasn't the same thing all the time. Like, the character learned to trust more. It was really... Yeah, uh, sometimes he'd shoot people with arrows. Sometimes he'd shoot things with arrows. Targets. <laughs> it was very different. Well, and thank you. Fuck a- you. Alex, you really are the star of Pete's Arrow Club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is all making me realize what a absolute mark I am for Marvel. Everything Marvel. Because I'm so unfamiliar with all of this. But I, I think you guys are making the argument that it's sort of like, this is the Iron Man. Arrow is what sets everything... <laughs> Allows everything to happen, or you can make the argument blade. Sure. Wow. Uh, nice. That really like is the thing that may not be 
absolutely perfect when you go back and look look at it. It is very good though when you go back and watch it again. Hell yeah, yeah. bro! Um, and and it's the thing that allows for the rest of it all to sort of have precedent to point at to green light. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's important. And that's the, those weird outliers that allow for new things, regardless of the way they turn out. And Thank you, Bob. Are important. Yeah. Thank you. That's really I nice. definitely agree. I have a question for you, Pete. Can we talk about the last scene of the show? Yeah. Uh, uh, so the end of the show, the very end of Arrow, and if you don't want to hear it, obviously earmuffs or anything, but the end of the show, uh, you Felicity can tell Smoke. He's a dad, because you said earmuffs. What? You know what? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't listen to this since I could always oh, go back. Oh, you're going to start. Arrow. I can go back. To okay. season one. Uh, so the end of the show, uh, Arrow has been dead, as we mentioned. His wife, Felicity Smoke, uh, has lived on without him. Uh, Her name is Felicity Smoke? Hell yeah, yeah. it is. Wow, okay. Yeah. That's cool. She's she almost the dated well. the Flash for a little bit. No, no judgment. Yeah, uh, just surprised that that her name is Smoke. And and I'll tell you what, her is seeing her with the Flash. I was kind of like, oh, they work better together. Fuck you. They have a good. They, they do have, have a lot of good relationship. Man. Nothing against the Iris West thing or anything like that. But Felicity has way more chemistry with Barry Allen than she does with all her. Uh, fuck you. So to that end, at the end, she made a deal with the Monitor to go visit him. Mm-hmm. We already saw her in the season seven finale walk off with him into a portal. Uh, so we get to see where she goes. She goes to this portal, and the place that she goes is his old office, his mom's office, right? Wait for this. this is touching. Am I going to uh, cry? And yeah. he's there, and they're both dead, and it's the afterlife, and they're going to hang out in an office for eternity. Well, that's what heaven is. It's a fucking sweet office. A Boom. sweet office? Yeah. Oh, that was man. a weird ending to no, that wait, show. No, dude. Wait, was fuck, first, wait, wait. Don't start yet. First off... <laughs> It was a really touching thing because she goes, why are we here? This is when we first met. And he chuckles, and we get the flashback. This is the first time he ever saw Felicity smoke. And even though she's talking to a painting of him because she thinks he's dead, she calls him cute. And that's like his green light to go and be like, I think you're amazing. So her reward for a lifetime of service to the world is being trapped in the moment he thought first thought she was cute? Well, they... the. That's the origin story of them. Yeah, why wouldn't they but live in each other? She didn't other's... know about it. I have a quick Who question. Cares? She you... knows about it. It's now. not important to her. It will be once he tells once her. Once he traps her there for all eternity. Oh my God, he's in not in charge of office. heaven, you asshole. I have a question. What about this office is so good? Well, well hang man. on a have minute. Have you ever been to an office and they don't charge you for sodies? I go to an <laughs> office pretty much every day. Oh, sure. And there's seltzer there. Yeah. Is it unlimited? Technically, I guess. Well, then, welcome to heaven, bro. I, I don't think it's so unbelievable. I, there's maybe, because I didn't see any of this. This is all out of sure, context for sure, me. Sure. But from what I'm gathering, oh, here we go. there I might take. be an apt sure. metaphor here, you know, because yeah. as we know, as artists, as creators of content and performers mm. in the fullness of time, that, you know, that doesn't always, that doesn't always do it. That big yeah. premiere, that big opportunity, it doesn't change your life the way you think it does because right. nothing ever really does. Wow. So in the end, if you have chosen this life, you got to realize, well, the work is its own reward. That's as good Holy as the life shit. is ever going to get. Right. Whoa. And maybe That's that fair. is heaven. And if you're a superhero... Like Arrow, the Green Arrow. Then you go to the superhero office and you punch your ass in. Yeah, you get a you get a hot Keurig, and you you get a hot hot Keurig, (laughs) fresh Keurig, everyone's favorite coffee, and you solve crimes. And if there aren't any, you make them up. You go (laughs) you you go out into heaven and you disrupt until there is enough crime, and then you solve it all. You create crime in heaven. If you were going to be trapped somewhere for all eternity, oh man, heaven against your will, it would be heaven, definitely. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) I would choose heaven. (laughs) But what would your heaven be? Where would it be? What what location? I would be, yeah, I would be Pete. Eight years, got it. All right, eight years old, and it's Chuck E. Cheese. All the tokens I can. Uh, Jesus Christ! Yeah, that's what hell, buddy. A nightmare. No man, when you were a kid, that's the best thing ever. Unlimited pizza, unlimited games, and a fucking so ball you're crawl. Eight year old the entire time. Let yeah. me just say, the cheese underneath the stage was where bullying happened, or so, making out happened. Well, we lived Not in a different at town. Eight? 
Jesus Christ, Pete, you were molested. Pete lost his virginity in the cheese at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats, buddy. No wonder you want to go back there. Yep. You're like, cheese, pizza, <laughs> cheese, fucking, <laughs> oh my God. cheese video games. Oh. Dude loves cheese. Where's your heaven there, hot stuff? Uh, so, Chuck E. Cheese, yeah. I'm 15, I'm dressed in a mouse costume. Oh, nice. You're the, one of the robots? <laughs> You're one of the animatronic robots? Yeah, one of the animatronic robots. The Alex, the one of the robots, bro. Every time? You have to be one of the robots. It's the greatest acting challenge of your life. Welcome to our world I can barely move. comics. What about you, Justin? Right here with my guys. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Podcasting for all eternity. <laughs> <laughs> Covering all the comic book news in heaven. Yeah, oh, my are. God. Last, last episode of our Amazing. <laughs> I want to live Christ. in an endless arrow corner. <laughs> forever, forever not talking about arrow <laughs> is where I want to spend eternity. So I've got, to that end, I've got bad news for you because this always happens. You don't remember beginning this segment, do you? You're right. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. Do you remember the lead in to what this segment is? Do you know how long we've been here? We died oh, in a gas I, leak. I remember, <laughs> yeah. I remember that. I remember you saying, oh, you it's always weird. forget. Yeah. And then all I remember is talking about Arrow. That's right. right. Wow, yeah. we're in a. Oh, uh, you know, I, all I remember for 15 years is talking about Arrow. I know, and I'm... 15 years? <laughs> <laughs> it was on for eight seasons. Uh, I've, I've been dead but for a long time. <laughs> but it was rumored time, in the pages of that. Wizard Magazine long <laughs> before that. <laughs> so hold on, I just want to establish some continuity here uh, of this bit. Uh, so there is Gasly. Uh, we've been here some amount of time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Of the gas leak, clearly first. years yeah. before it was us. a separate gas leak. First, I'm okay. first, okay. and <laughs> and Pete was talking about Arrow before it was a television. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, sorry to hear that, bud. Yeah. Our continuity. We just added a lot to our continuity. A lot of lore. Tell you what, it's yeah. Big lore build out. And folks, that is all the time we have for Pete's yeah. Arrow Corner. Yeah. Final oh, Pete's it. Arrow Corner. Uh, and now. It is time. I don't know if we have time for this, actually, because we talked about Arrow so much. Uh, but it's time, time for some audience questions. Yeah. 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 Yes, I saw Kevin's head shoot up. What's going on? Uh, hello, my name is Kevin. Uh, hey, Kevin. Uh, hey, buddy. hey, Kevin. My favorite friend is Ted Knight. Ah, there you go. Yes. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. Is that it? Did I you unlock you. it? No. Did you unlock it? No, no, no. That's, that's, that would be crazy. No. <laughs> oh. If the, that was the... That would be a great... Yeah. So, actually, going back to that, um, what is a television show that's not a superhero or comic book one that you'd love to see a superhero version of? Ooh, Ooh nice. A superhero version of a, a celebrated television show. Sure. That's good. That's a good one. Oh, gosh. Or just just, a, just any sort of television show that you'd want to see an uh, like an upgraded them upgraded into a superhero show. Ooh, okay, I'm ready. Go what ahead. is it, Pete? Uh, see, what they do is they do another nine seasons of Arrow. Oh, and, it, and this time stuff happens. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this time it's a superhero show. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Uh, um, well, this is this is. I, I, I'm going to say something here, and if okay. somebody just turns this into a TV show after I say it, then we'll all know where it came from. Okay, okay. nice. All right. It's legally binding. I want to see a version of Euphoria that takes place at Charles Xavier's School for the Gifted Youngsters. Yes. Ooh. Like a I sex lo- X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> sex X-Men. Sex X-Men. Yeah. Sex-Men. yeah. I love that idea. I think that's a great idea. Or like, uh, or like sex education or like freaks and sure. geeks. Yes. These, these sort of like... Freaks and geeks, yeah. Well, and that, that gets back to sort of what the X-Men was in originally, where mm. it was like your body's changing, not what you think. It's changing into a, like a superpower or right. a curse or whatever it is. Right. Uh, the, and that's sex education specifically. Is, a, is, is that, and it's sort of like... Oh, sex education is cool because it deals with all of the disinformation that's out there about yeah. sex that kids have to wade through, and you could do that through X-Men. And I think the cool thing that Euphoria does is show just how nihilistic the worldview of the young generation happens to be at this current moment. And I think yeah. you could do a lot with that as... If you're like a mutant, youngster mutant, like come on. Mm. If you're a black pilled youngster mutant, yep. and you yep. have, you literally think there is no future. 
black pill. Holy well, shit. Well, sex education is kind of like the new mutants, and you. I'm not sure if I'm using like, that term right. Yeah, I, I think it's blue or red pill, but I'm very curious what a black well, pill is. I, I, I actually, this is, I did the stupid thing of said, like, I heard something on a podcast, and then I tried to use it just oh, now yeah, on no. a different podcast. Black pill. That's okay. I, Someone who was listening to this podcast and stopped right when you said it is going to now do say that. I feel like, yeah, go ahead and at <laughs> me. Go ahead and at me, because I don't, I don't get it. But I think it's somebody that's just basically like, oh, the world's fucked. Like, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm not going to vote. I'm going to take a lot of painkillers and fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, There's uh, there's a whole deleted sequence in The Matrix where he's like, do you want the blue pill or the red pill? And Neo's like, what about that black pill? Yeah. (laughs) He just goes back to the original (laughs) rave. Don't don't worry about that. He's got a rainbow of pills. Don't worry about that. Yeah, don't take the black (laughs) pill. I I have a blue pill and a red pill. And he's like, yeah, but that black pill looks interesting. Yeah, Yeah, I'm just going to go back to that. probably better for me. I should take the green pill. Yeah, what is that, like chlorophyll or what's going on? (laughs) Yeah. He, He goes back to where he met Trinity which is just like the all night dance club and he mm-hmm. just he stays there for like 11 days. Yeah. 11 days. No sleep. <laughs> That's 11 days is so many days. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, That's this like, fucking cat is skipping." That's like more than sweet. He's sweet just like, "Oh man, the the climate change is inevitable. I'm just going to drink lean and wow. like take sleeping pills and try and stay awake." <laughs> uh, anyway, cool. to answer your question, we're all yes, we're all very excited for Matrix Four. All right, yeah. I see another uh, nice. question over here. Come on down. Super what is your pow- name? What's your super powered Fraser? Go ahead. Ooh. Interesting. I'm Pablo. Hey, Pablo. Hi, Pablo. Nice. Um, have any of you seen? Have any of you seen the Super Bowl? The Super Bowl. Any of them? I mean, this weekend. Yeah. Yes, I, uh, I I skipped it. I had an edge of. Uh, Edge of the Empire game. Nice. Instead. Wow. Well, you seem stressed about that. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> what were the commercials like in your game? Yeah. There was one for uh, Senator Banks' re-election campaign. Nice. There's a. There's one wow. uh, death Senator sticks. Jar-Jar there's a death sticks uh, ad that I, that was only available to go out in certain systems. Oh, no, one more. Uh, you have one more. I did watch the Super Bowl. I do have a question that that leads into that. Nice. Prime the pump. Favorite what are your favorite commercial? commercials? Favorite yeah, commercials. And favorite food. commercial. That makes sense. There you go. Yeah. I love the, where's the beef? That's nice. my favorite oh, commercial. Nice. Yeah, going nice. all the way. Where's the beef? Yeah. Uh, the, favorite commercials of this year's Super Bowl. This year. Oh, this, oh, this, this year's Super Bowl. Uh, Bill oh, okay. Murray's uh, Groundhog Day. That was just fun. Great. Stuff. Bill Murray is, is magic. Absolute magic. Great. Yeah, it was very fun. Uh, I, uh, I mean... We we talk uh, the trailers for the new upcoming Marvel shows are very exciting. It was great. Um, so that was that was great. Wandavision, baby very peanut. Much. You didn't like the baby peanut one. Um, I look forward to the Marvel Cinematic Universe baby peanut show, but um, I. So having not seen it, does the Wandavision thing look like it's going to be sourced mainly from the the Vision limited series? It looks I exactly think exactly like that. I disagree yeah. with Pete. I That's think. exciting. I think it's actually not going to be sourced from that. I think it's more of a... That would be a mistake. I think it's more of a Wanda. Like, the Vision series is about the Vision sort of building that world. This is about Wanda building a world. I think she's dealing with the losses she suffered and is uh, slowly uh, losing her mind. I think that's the advantage that a lot of maybe, like, like, like a lot of screenwriters maybe have on these, like big properties where they can pick and choose all of the best story elements from the last... Because, like, it seems like this launch of new Marvel series comes from a time, or at least, like, the look and feel of a lot of these comes from a time where I was reading a lot of Marvel, where it was, like, the the She-Hulk, Charles Soule, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and then, like, uh, Hawkeye with David Aja and Matt Fraction. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then, like, a lot of this great single character, like, almost risky stuff for Marvel at the time and like that's where they're seeming to get some of this but because you've already read that it can't be exactly that yeah so and I don't think they want to just do it like word for word right um I uh the the birth of baby nut as we all saw sure Um, let's talk about that um I think it was odd that the Kool-Aid man and Mr. Clean We're would, there. Be, would be Why? showing up. Well, like, are they friends? Because Kool-Aid Man is inherently a mess maker. And Mr. Clean is um, inherently a Yeah, corrupt. but they're famous commercial people. No, but I'm saying just the characters themselves. Like, would they be friends? I'll, yeah. I'll tell you what. 
I the thing that I loved about the baby nut commercial mm-hmm. was the reaction to it, which clearly it came out like there was clear sourcing where they were like people love baby versions of things. There was clearly the ad agency talked about that, right? Yeah, and I love that they were like. Groot came out with Baby Groot, and everybody yeah. was like, oh, my God, I love Baby Groot. Exactly. Give me all the Baby Groot things now. And then Baby Yoda came out, and they're like, oh, my God, I love Baby Yoda. Everybody, give me all the Baby Yoda things Exactly, down. like Baby Hitler and, was like, I got to kill yeah, Baby yeah. Hitler. <laughs> and then Baby <laughs> Nut came out, and everybody was like, fuck you, you stupid pieces of shit. Yeah. How dare you? What? This is, you like Baby Nut? Yeah. No. You did? No, yeah. nobody likes Baby Nut. What did you I like, like about Baby Nut? What are you adorable. talking about? It it's the most obvious. It's terrible. Alex is adorable. Mad you like it because it was cute. Yeah, oh, I didn't like you. that he spoke. They got in, you. I didn't like that he spoke dolphin voice. It was <laughs> weird. It was the whole thing was very weird. uncomfortable. Yeah, it was very uncomfortable. And then they had the live can afterwards, where they're like, "Make him do stuff." Did you see that? They posted on Twitter. They're like. At request that I do stuff and I'll, maybe I'll do it live on camera, which I was like, what the fuck? This is live A, on supposed to be a peanut, so stop sexualizing it. B, it's supposed to be a baby, so stop sexualizing it. I don't think it. they were sexualizing. To I mean, fair, everybody I think, immediately sexualized. Yeah, but I think there's a leap that maybe it's you... Like, and I'm a bunch just saying of, it's like Pete at uh, Chuck E. Cheese back when he was eight years old. Oh, oh man. God. Imagine if we got a baby Pete, though. That, <laughs> that would, would be, be awesome. Just would he talk like a dolphin? Pete. Huh? Yeah. I was oh. angry. Angry Pete? Well, there you go. Our favorite commercial is Baby Nut. Okay, uh, we got another <laughs> one more question over here. Name and question. Hi, my name's Brandon. And first of all, my favorite character from Friends was the Incredible Hulk during the Peter David written seasons. Wow. And uh, also, uh, I, so, yeah. my question is, in the Mortal Kombat movie novelizations, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. so since those movies, 90% of it is... The song Mortal Kombat. Right. So, it, is the line Mortal Kombat or the beat written in the novelization? Yeah, wow. they actually have the, um, the full. Thank you, question, thank you for your question, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, so, I guess is, the, question, the question is did they write the music into the. Book? Or was it like one of those greeting cards you could open and it plays the song? Well, it was, it was full. Staff notation of uh, Mortal Kombat House Seven Inch Mix. Um, Ooh, wow! Just my favorite mix. Completely tabbed out for seven or eight, nine pages because there's a small it's novelization, nine ten pages, uh, and because it's as we know, it's like kind of a, a house song, pretty repetitive. Indeed. Um, you flip through that part pretty quick because it's sure. essentially just looking at a pattern. Yeah. Um, and every once in a while, the name of the book you're reading appears. And so you just got to <laughs> skip past it. The thing with Mortal Kombat is it's just, it's dangerous. Because, like, mm-hmm. obviously, we all know anyone can shout Mortal Kombat oh in a crowded God. room. I've been and waiting my two whole people, life. And then two people have to fight. Yeah, I've been waiting my whole life for someone to yell Mortal Kombat when I'm somewhere. Same with Surge. That's right. Yeah. You can do thing. that, too. Uh, I had a, a question, audience question. Oh, here we go. What is this? Okay. Which audience member are you going to ask? Uh, this is, uh, I'm trying to unlock the Starman quiz. Oh, shit. Oh, actually, uh, think, hold that thought think. for a second because I have a real audience question. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> well, you can still ask. Wait, yeah, why don't I ask it while you're running away? Okay, because it's just a Justin. I would like to open the Shades Journal. Ooh, that's good. Did that's I unlock good. it? No, but Come I like on, I like where your head's at. Oh. I like where your head's at. Were, were, were you what? trying to unlock the Starman quiz that's yourself, that's Peter? Or was that up. something somebody sent? What's in? Starman? What are we talking about? That's the oh. that unlocks it. What? <laughs> no, I'm just nah, kidding. It's at, <laughs> no. Oh my god. Uh, Starman's my favorite comic, and we do this thing on the show where. Um, for some reason, there are quizzes hidden everywhere. Secret quizzes. Yeah. It's like if Jeopardy was like, oh, it's not just these questions. It's questions fucking everywhere. Sure. Uh, and you have to unlock it with a phrase? Yeah. Yes. Is it... Uh, a, a certain phrase yeah, will unlock it. Ah, man waiting in that's the good. sky. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, we are very Didn't rapidly running it. out of time here, but I do want to read this because we got this one over email from Corbin Gross. Uh, says, hey guys, first off, I really want to say I appreciate all you do. Uh, and this was sent to comicbookclublive at gmail.com. So if anybody else wants to send us questions there, please do. Uh, I want to say I really appreciate all you do. You all are wonderful to listen to. I listen to all of your podcasts, even for shows that I have no intention of ever watching. If I wow. had friends, I'd like to think they'd 
be a lot like you. Just teasing. Right. I've been rereading Lock and Key with you guys recently, and I can't wait for the show. Anyway, here's the question. I quit buying single issues a few years ago, and I've kind of lost track of what's going on. I want to know what you think are the most fun ARC series trades collections from the last few years. They don't Ooh. have to be the best written or the most goodest art or whatever, just the ones that were the most fun to read. There's also a bonus question that I'll get to in a second, but why don't we start with that? What are the... We'll start there because we're the going to go another si- hour, right? We're going yeah. another 60. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're you going bonus. Yeah. Yeah. 60, 70, something like that. We'll see what happens. Uh, but real quick... Best trades in the last couple of years are yeah. most fun. Um, uh, I would have to go with... Uh, uh, Paper Girls, and then I'm mm-hmm. going to go with Why the Last Man Really Blew My uh, Lid Off. Nice. that That's great. Um, I'm going to say from uh, recently, uh, really a lot of fun to read Ice Cream Man. Uh, oh. The first uh, trade it's of more that. Recent. was more recent, yeah. Um, I don't know if this is, I'm completely losing track of time, but Superior Foes of Spider-Man was relatively recent, right? Yeah, it was like Fuck five years, four years, years ago. Was it really? You fucking I piece think it's of been shit. a while. Well, that was so much fun. Nick no, Spencer's been doing Spider-Man for multiple years. Sure, there we go. Uh, well, that garbage. was super fun if you like a villain book. Uh, Bob, do you have any recommendations? Uh, I started reading Monstrous. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Holy yeah. shit. Very good. What? Where gotcha. that book? Like, so I've read so many books, and I don't want to name any books, but they're sort of like described this way when you first started reading them. And Monstrous is the first book I read where I'm like, this is, yeah, this is it. Wow. Uh, yeah, definitely check that out. Now, here is the bonus question. Uh, I want to give a little bit of setup for this and uh, just yeah. couch it to the fact that there's people here in the theater. This is an audio podcast, so um, w- w- I'm about to talk about something, but we'll put it up on our Twitter feed at Comic Book Live so people can see it. Okay. Uh, a little bit of context here. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, we used to do a preacher podcast. We did. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. we did a preacher podcast. I didn't for know you guys did a religious podcast. I like where this is going. <laughs> we did a preacher podcast for a couple of years. Uh, where uh, it was all about the show Preacher. We recapped each episode. And everything we said on that show was Stone Cold Fact. <laughs> Stone no, Cold that's fact. not true. That's every single uh, sec- And so segment. this kind of ties into the bonus question uh, that Corbin has here. Again, I'll, I'll post this online for people to see. Uh, he says, I have one bonus question also. If I scratch Pete's belly, will he love me forever? Hashtag Poodle Pete no. image attached. Uh, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna pass this image over what? to don't pass uh, this over Justin. to me. <laughs> oh my god, that is great. That is truly that great. is a picture. And you can check te- you can check this out on our Twitter feed, as Alex said. And it, to be fair, it is P. Uh, as the human sexual dog that was the uh, main <laughs> character on Preacher Men. And um, there's the phrase, uh, Pete's catchphrase, maybe we'll get him to read it in a sec, that says, give me some chicky wings. And that is your catchphrase, right? Yeah, no. could you say that real quick? Just, just say, say, the, say the words. Give me some here. chicky wigs? No. Let me be honest. Honestly, the blending of Pete's goatee with this poodle fur <laughs> is legit. I have to say, very it's kind good. of amazing. This photoshopping, or is this an actual photo? I don't know. I, we'll, we'll never know. But that's a beautiful I'll photo. I'll just pass this over to Bob. Yep. Here's the picture see. of Pete as a uh, human sexual poodle. Oh, good. Hashtag Pete the I've poodle. never seen yeah. Pete say, I've never heard Pete say, give me some chicky wings, but I can believe <laughs> that you would say it. <laughs> that was the thing when I saw <laughs> The picture. I was like, I don't think he ever said that on the podcast, but yeah. it tracks. I do like you do like chicken wings. You got to be impressed by that to. Photoshop. He blended your beard with the poodle's fur. That's well, a, even if I he didn't, even if he didn't, it. though. Like now that I feel like now he that I'm that. making comics, I can kind of say this sort of thing. But sometimes yeah. when you finish an image. The words that you originally captioned it with, they don't work anymore, and something else just. Calls to you and says, this, sure. "These are the new words. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. These are me, the words." Yeah, like I look at that human sexual dog and I'm like, "Give, give me, me some, some chicky, chicky wings." Yeah, exactly. yeah that's what I, I'm, I almost just said it. Yeah, you did. Look at it. it. You did say. It. Oh, I did say it. It's yeah. mesmerizing. Right? The power uh, of this here, image uh, compels well, me to we, say it. That is truly ex- very well done. Yeah, I'm just going to no, show the should should I show the audience. Do you guys want to see this? Should I just run around and show you guys? Yeah, walk around. You guys like images? Do you guys like JPEGs? Here we go. This is the picture of Pete as a poodle. There you go. Pete is a lot poodle. Of, a lot of nodding heads. In the yeah, crowd. everybody's in agreement here. I was like, yep. There yep. you go. Checks out. Uh, Ooh, Bruce Valanche. Bruce, Bruce Valanche, yeah, looks a little bit like Bruce oh, Valanche. Oh, it does. Is Bruce Valanche a human sexual poodle? Pete? I mean, maybe. I'm just turning to you because you seem to know about this. He things. gave that life up a long time ago. Okay, but just to get back to the question, if he scratches your belly, will uh, you love him forever? Nope. Oh, oh man. Wow. 
Pete, we talked about Arrow for our conservatively, I want to say, five years uh, just now. <laughs> Give this guy an answer. No. Just no? No. I feel like and we're... now it's time for our next section, which is trivia. And for that, we're going to turn it over to hashtag Pete the Poodle. Yeah. yeah. Pete the Pete, by the way, just somehow killed me with his eyes. Yeah. Fuck with his eyes. There's a better murder out here. This is the part we give back to you, the lovely audience. It's an opportunity to win 25 free dollars in the form of a gift card to Midtown Comics. Who would like 25 free dollars? Nice. Anyone can right. raise their hand. He just raised his hand. All right. I'm just, you know, there's a new guy in the back. Maybe he wanted 25 bucks. I want to see what would happen. Okay. Yeah. You want to see it first. Uh, I get it. All right. So cautious. I'm going to read you a question. Listen to all three possible answers. Get all three questions right. $25 yours. Okay. Uh, remind everybody uh, what your name is again. Brandon Medina. Brandon. Audience. Audience. Brandon. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Today's trivia is on topical comic news. Question number one. What is the name of the fighting style comic slash manual being released about Star Trek's Captain Kirk? Is it A, Kirk Fu, B, Spock Jitsu, or C, Sam Neill? So it's either A or you could pick B. I'm going to guess A, Kirk A Fu? is correct. Uh, They're yeah. coming out Boom. with a Not manual you. dedicated to Kirk's Kung Fu style in the TV show called Kirk Fu. Excuse me, guys. Sorry, I got to get that. That Don't is worry. Um, not that named is. after Star of Event Horizon. But uh, I'm, I'm going to pick this up. I want to learn Kirk Fu. Uh, cool. Question number two. Who is writing next month's DC comic called Leviathan Dawn? Number one. Mm-hmm. Is it A, Jim Lee, B, Brian Michael Bendis, Bendis, or C, Oliver Platt? So it's either mm. A or it's B. I'm going to say B for B.B. Bendis. That is uh, correct, not sir. B. 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 Not, not, is not the star of Lake Placid, Oliver no. Platt. Nope. No, well done. <laughs> Here we go. Last question. 2020 marks the 25th anniversary of what comic book character? Is it A, Witchblade, B, Tomb Raider, or is it C, Angela Landis? So it's either A, if you would like $25, or you could not get this gift card right here. I'm going to say A. A is correct. Nice. Nice. Play 25 years. Awesome. Amazing. Uh, Now, there's a sub quiz in your quiz. Mm -hmm. Third answers add up to a Robin Williams movie. What are the answers, Pete? Sam Neill. Yep. Oliver Platt. Yep. Angela Landis. Angela Angela Landis. Who is that? Not Lansbury? That is correct. Okay. Uh, Anybody know what movie this is? Pete, want to give a clue? Is this a home video? It's uh, Robin Williams plays uh, kind of a robot type character. Death, oh, death to Smoochie? Nope. Bicentennial. 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 Bicycle man. Bicentennial man. Bicycle man. Nice. The famous Angela Landis. It's a <laughs> famous Great. Italian neo-realist film. The Bicycle Man. <laughs> yes. I love that one. Uh, I do want to mention, just on the sub-note about that uh, wonderful picture that was sent to us, I wrote Corbin back and said, this is, without exaggeration, the most amazing picture I've ever seen. Is it okay to share on our social channels? Uh, and Corbin said, I'm absolutely flattered to death. Yeah, please share it. I was afraid you guys already had... <laughs> Sorry. I was afraid you guys <laughs> already had stacks of peat dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Let me, oh, I want to change my answer about heaven. It's more of those photos. <laughs> it's over just and over. living the rest of eternity surrounded by stacks and stacks of peat dogs. Peat dogs. Peat dog. He does not like this at all. He doesn't uh, like so this. So you know what? We're going to move on. But honestly, uh, Pete move on to the next segment: the stack of Pizza. peat dogs. Pete's a very bad dog. Listen, bad dog. As we all know, tomorrow is New Comic Book Day. We recommend you go to Midtown Comics because they've been nice enough to sponsor the show. Pete, what are you looking forward to? I'm d- looking forward to two comics, Lois Lane number 8 and Martian Manhunter number 12 of 12. Wrapping up the series. Yeah. Wow. I, I'm, uh, I was really impressed with uh, what Orlando did on Martian Manhunter. I'm excited to see how it ends. There you go. 
Justin, what about you? I'm looking forward to Birthright number 41. Uh, and I don't know if go. I've ever talked about this series before. Here but, we go. Uh, it is uh, the premise of the series is that a, a kid wanders off in the woods when he is uh, just a boy. He goes to a Could world. Could happen to anybody. Could have happened to anybody. Could happen to you. Could happen to me. Not Alex, maybe. No, I didn't Alex, grow up in the woods. I, I grew up in the woods, so I know my way around. Oh, wow, what an yeah. adventurous boy. What's that, a tree? I'll go that way. Uh, nice, smart. That's a very big scouting thing. Go toward the trees. That's what they say. Uh, uh, a kid wanders off in the woods. He travels to a fantastical world where he is the chosen one. He uh, becomes a Conan-like figure and then um, comes back to Earth to save the day. Turns out he's been taken by the bad guy oh, and shit. is working uh, for him. It's a very fun series. It's getting to the penny penny ultimate uh, chapter. Very exciting. And we will have a review of that in our Stack Podcast, which goes up Wednesday, 9 a.m. in its own feed, as well as the Comic Book Club feed. Another one that we're going to be reviewing that I'm looking forward to is Star Wars Darth Vader. Number one is coming out from Marvel Comics from who? Greg Pak, who oh, we nice. always like on the show. And the Darth Vader books have been consistently very good. Very good. So that should be a lot of fun. Bob, plug your stuff. What should people check out? I would love it if people were to check out one of my original comics, uh, Sled or Die creatives or a saga of Thane, which are all available through my big cartel. Uh, one of um, your uh, person you've worked with in the past, Becky Cloonan, mm-hmm. um, we review a book of hers in our stack podcast as well that comes out tomorrow. Dark Agnes, number one. Yes. Dark Agnes. Yes, exactly. How did you guys, was it, did it fare well in the yeah, review? Yeah, it was great. Yeah. You just have to tune in. You just in have to, to tune in. But Pop, they tune told in. you. I'm going to subscribe on uh, Spotify, iTunes, and wherever I get my podcasts oh, so that I can oh, hear the podcast series. Um, I would also it. add to that uh, there is, speaking of Becky Cloonan, um, a Mystery School Comics Group, uh, which publishes my uh, adventure zine that I co authored with, uh, with Becky and Michael and a ton of my friends from my hometown. Um, so if you check out Mystery School, uh, you can also find our cool D and D collaboration. That's that's what I was setting up. Thank when you I was so much for and doing that. That's a great that. book. Yeah, it's very good. Definitely uh, check that yeah, out for sure. Uh, all right, before we go, a couple of things to plug on our end. We have a bunch more podcasts that you can check out. Riverdale Tom. After Dark is our Riverdale podcast. That is every Wednesday after the show. Also, Katie Keencast. Our Katie Keen podcast is launching this week. Which we're doing. Yeah, we're definitely doing it. We've all prepped for it properly and are <laughs> ready to go. Is there a Katie Keen TV show? <laughs> we yeah. bought it. We're ready to do it. It's we're ready show. to do it. Any moment. It's a show for... The people like us, older uh, men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that's Good night, good. folks. <laughs> uh, also, Lock and Key Unlocked, or Lock and Key Podcast. Definitely check that one out. Uh, if you check out... <laughs> Bob's dead now. Uh, if you check out the actual feed, uh, not only do we have recaps of the books, going into recaps of the Netflix series, uh, but we have some special chats with Gabriel Rodriguez, Chris Ryle, the editor. Uh, we also have a throwback show with Joe Hill you can listen to, so definitely check all of that out. I think that's all the podcasts we're doing right so now. So many, it's not we're all of them. We're going to be rebooting Preacher Man, which is very exciting as we start nice. getting in stacks of uh, Pete Dog picks. Nope. Got those Pete Dogs. <laughs> Give me those Pete Dogs. Hey, Pete Dog, anything you want to uh, plug? I'm not going to respond to that. Oh, man. Uh, check is. us out on Facebook for all the amazing guests that we have on our show. Follow us on Twitter at Comic Book Live. Check us out at ComicBookClubLive.com for this podcast and many more. As Bob mentioned, iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice. Please do comment on iTunes. A couple of people we want to thank before we go. We want to thank Bob for being on the show. Yay! Yeah. Booth Man Prime! Booth Man Prime! But most of all, we want to thank you all. We're here every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Totally free. Please tell your friends good night. Good Thanks Thanks guys, out, as always, to beat this uh, sound in the
Yeah.